today we are discussing the fungi rhizopus which belongs to the subdivision Zygomycotina. Zygomycotina is a group of xenocytic fungi. Xenocytic meaning multinucleated and aseptate. Most of its members are terrestrial saprophytes and a few parasites are also found. Terrestrial species include soil saprops and coprophilus forms. What are coprophilus? Coprophilus forms means those growing in animal fecus or animal dung. Soil saprops feed on dead and decaying organic matter in the soil. Parasitic species are of two types, facultative parasites and obligatory parasites. Some parasites uh, which belongs to Zygomycotina attack human body and cause mucomycosis. Uh, for example, um, fungi that produces um, black mold or uh, uh, in human beings are b belonging to Zygomycotina. Now let us look at the salient features of the Zygomycotina. Thallus is filamentous, hyphae are branched, aseptate, multinucleate or we can call it xenocytic. Septa is formed in old mycelia to cut off reproductive structures and to seal off injuries only. Hyphal wall, it is made up of chitin and chitosan complex. Flagellated cells or motile cells are absent. Asexual reproduction is by the means of non-motile sporangiospores or aplanospores, commonly produced in the sporangia. Chlamydophores are usually formed. Sexual reproduction involved uh, is involved by gametangial fusion and the formation of zygospore or zoospore formation is absent. Zygospore is a resting body. So now we are going to discuss about rhizopus which is bread mold. The systematic position it belongs to subdivision Zygomycotina family Mucoraceae and genus Rhizopus. Okay, Rhizobus is commonly called black black bread mold or black mold. It is a saprophytic fungus. It grows on variety of substrata such as jam, moist bread, decaying foodstuffs, uh, etc. Okay, they are primarily decomposers. Um, as we've discussed earlier, they are they are asexual spores are produced in sporangia and sexual spores. Uh, sexual reproduction is by gametangial fusion between positive and negative strains, mm, and they produce the zygospore. Okay, mm, the zygospore they may uh, undergo a period of rest, and meiosis occurs just before germination. The zygote which is formed is diploid and all the all hyphae and asexual spores are haploid in condition so the vegetative body of rhizopus is haploid eucarpic mycelium okay just haploid eucarpic mycelium the mycelia is formed as cottony white growth on substrata uh, it is formed, uh, it is composed of network of uh, tubular non septate xenocytic hyphae. And the young mycelium is alike, but as it, it grows, they get differentiated into three kinds of hyphae known as stolen rhizoids and sporangiophores. What we see here is the rice uh, the, the 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 three forms that is the root like rhizoids which are formed um, inside the substratum then there is stolen or horizontal hyphae that is seen on the surface of the substratum and from the stolen only these rhizoids and the sporangiophore arises so what we see above the substratum is the sporangio, sporangiophores. Okay. Uh, so when we discuss two kinds of hyphae are they? What are they? Vegetative hyphae and reproductive hyphae. The vegetative hyphae are of two types. They are stolen and rhizoids. Stolen is uh, 
grows horizontally to the substratum the internodal region called the runner the stolon is aerial hyphae that grow horizontally and it is found attached to the substratum stolons are aseptate branched and non septate rhizoids from the nodal region uh, it forms a contact between stolon to the surface of the substratum rhizoid is the branch structure that forms under the substratum the main function is to invade all the nutrients from the substratum now we have the um, reproductive hyphae which forms uh, the reproductive structures now in when you take reproduction reproduction is by three means vegetative asexual and sexual means vegetative reproduction is by fragmentation that means when fragments of rhizopus fall on a substratum then they give rise to new fragments asexual reproduction is by the formation of sporangiophore mm, first the vegetative hyphae grow to form the sporangiophore that is long and slender the sporangiophore develop and enlarge at the apical region to form columella of variable shape and size the columella leaf gives rise to a large and round sporangium by pushing its cytoplasmic material to the peripheral wall after that differentiation of sporangia occurs and give rise to the fo formation of spore sac uh, uh, between the sporangia and the columella the spore sac carries the sporangiophores that are ovoid oval and Mm, yeah, that are oval okay N and black in color <coughs> so what we see here is the sexual reproduction from the hyphae the hyphae um, um, a growth um, a growth of from the hyphae uh, which occurs straight and the tip of the hyphae becomes enlarged then there is differentiation more amount of uh, cytoplasm uh, flows to the tip of the hyphae and then there is differentiation as the columella and the sporangium so this brown colored region is the sporangiophores which be bear the sporangia during unfavorable condition uh, like when there is insufficient food material or water the protoplasm is surrounded by a thick and nutrient rich wall called the chlamydospore the chlamydospore then detaches from the vegetative hyphae and remain in the resting phase when this chlamydospore gets moisture it forms the germ tube and undergoes germination so this is the development of chlamydospore uh, spore uh, in this occurs only when there is unfavorable condition okay uh, otherwise sexual reproduction is by the means of formation of sporangiospores uh so when um, uh, once again let me tell you about uh, sporangiospores it is formed from erect hyphae that grows from the uh, from the uh, uh, filament now coming to the sexual reproduction uh, it forms by the com conjugation between positive and negative uh, hyphae the positive and negative hyphae they come in they come close to each other the septum between them disappears and eventually it forms the xenogamete then the karyogamy occurs between the positive and negative hyphae they fuse to form the zygote then this zygote becomes the zygospore the zygospore undergo a period of rest and on favorable conditions the zygospore produces a germ tube and germinate and thus uh, rhizobus reproduces through vegetative asexual and sexual means so this is the formation of zygospore so here we can see two hyphae coming together these are heterothallus that means of two different strain then a protuberance comes from the from each hypha 
and the protuberance then forms the there is a, a gametangial or there is a exchange of nuclei between the uh, two hypha and the zygospore is formed which is becomes thick walled and after a period of rest that a uh, thick walled structure is called the zygospore now this zygospore is resistant it can uh, tolerate uh, unfavorable conditions and after a period of rest this zygospore uh, germinate to form um, the zygospore germinate to form the sporangiophore from which a sporangiophore arises and this sporangiophore give rise to new hyphae the, the spores inside the sporangiophore gives rise to uh, new hypha. so this is the life cycle of uh, rhizopus the whole life cycle is given both the sexual and asexual uh, sexual and asexual reproduction is shown out here uh, so this is how the whole thing uh, goes now rhizopus is not only really, uh, harmful it also have many uh, commercial purposes like rhizopus oryza it is used in the production of cortisone and lactic acid it is used for the bioabsorption of heavy metals. Then Rhizopus tolonifer is also used to produce lactic acid and fumaric acid and cortisone. Rhizopus delemar is used to produce biotin and fumaric acid. So there are many commercial uses also. So hope you understood this section. If you have any doubts, please be free to ask.